Welcome to today's video, where I'm going to be walking you through the setup of the Celestron Power Seeker 50AZ telescope. So if you've just got this telescope and want to set it up quickly and maybe follow a video tutorial, then this is the video for you. And if you have any questions about this setup, maybe you get a little bit stuck or you just want some advice, then do drop a comment down below and I'll be sure to get back to you to offer some guidance. The first thing you need to do is to set up the tripod. So you may need to take a rubber band off that usually comes included on the legs. And I believe that this is a rubber band as well that you don't need. So all you can do is you can simply break that or you can cut that ahead of time. Um, and then you basically want to extend the tripod so it goes the whole way so that you should hear the clicks. And so they're fully set up and the tripod is in position. The next thing you need to do is extend the tripod legs. So you should notice that there's three clips that will be positioned relatively near the bottom. So what you want to do is open each one of those out. They should be locked by default. Mine actually arrived with one of these open, but don't worry too much. Just make sure that they're unlocked and hopefully you can see that here, what they should look like when they are unlocked. Once you do that, the legs should extend out and you want to put them the whole way so that will click. So let me just show you quickly. So that, there you go, that's it fully extended. And once it's extended, clip it in place. You want to do that for each and every leg. So there you go. And then we'll have that at the back. And you should find, because it's a tripod, that um, as you do one, the other ones start to fall down and you can kind of click them in more quickly. One quick note here is that you do want each leg to be the same length, because otherwise you're not gonna have stability when you set up your power seeker. So do bear that in mind. If you did want to make this shorter, you could, but again, as I say, make sure they're all the same length. Next thing we need to do is add the accessory tray. So to do that, make sure you place it the right way around, which would be that way. So that way facing up. So these obviously will align with the uh, inner tripod legs. And to do this, to add this accessory, accessory tray, you unscrew this. all the way, it does take a little while. You place this on top, make sure you're aligned at the bottom, which is does take a little bit of playing around. You should, you should feel uh, when they're kind of attached properly, you should feel a little bit of uh, There you go, it should click into place. Hopefully you heard that click. So you're looking for that click. It took me a little bit of time. Um, but there you go. Once that's in place, you then screw this back in in the direction it come off. So this is an exciting bit. We're now adding the optical tube to the tripod. So the first thing we need to do is we need to remove the threaded bolt from the underside of the telescope tube. So I believe it is this one here. So take this off. Again, you just screw uh, anti-clockwise to do that. Take it all the way off. The next couple of steps are pretty straightforward. All we need to do is we need to, with, so we took, we just unscrewed this from here. All we need to do now is we need to line this up onto the tripod. So I'm gonna turn that around, hopefully you can see, to line this up and make sure that you can see a hole the whole way through. Hopefully you can, I'm not sure if you can see that on my video. And then we just need to put this through, thread this through, okay? Hopefully you could see all of that. If you can't, I'll show you quickly again. It's quite tricky <laughs> doing this, but I do want to make sure you can see everything that I've done. So I've what I've done, sorry, I'm nearly there. This actually is quite a, quite a lot of thread to it. You see this, we're placing this over the top and then we're screwing this in. I'm just, yep, the hole's through and then we're just screwing this through. Make sure you get it aligned properly. You don't want to screw the thread and you just work that through. And this is just tightening the optical tube to the tripod. So there you go, that's much better. That's clipped all the way through. At this point, we want to add the finder scope to the power seeker. In order to do that, the first thing you need to do is remove these little nuts here. It's two of them, it does take a little while and I've dropped that, which is pretty annoying. Not a problem, I'll pick that up because we do need that in a second. So there's quite a long thread, so you just have to work through it. It's easy to do, 
takes a lot of time. So you get those. This time I won't drop it. Oh, I say that. I can't promise anything. Oh, it's got a lot of thread there. Right. Let's find that. Uh, here we go. Now what we want to do is we want to place the finder scope. Make sure you've you're got the right direction as well. So I believe... Yep, that's the right direction. So this, you want to angle it. So hopefully you can see that. So you've got these two bars sticking out. You want to angle your finder scope through there like that into position. So it's kind of, hopefully you can see, it's kind of attached there. Now what we need to do is we need to reuse those nuts that we took off. And basically we're using these to fix the, uh, the finder scope in place, okay? So you need to obviously that twice, so that's the first one. Now the second one, Hopefully you can, see, I don't know if you can see, it's quite tricky, um, but you get the idea. There's, I took two nuts off. We've put the silver bars through the finder scope. There's two large holes, and then we're just screwing them on, uh, going in a clockwise motion until it goes all the way to the bottom, and this is in fixed position, okay? So that's how to add the finder scope. Just make sure that you remove these two caps. You've got one on the front and one on the back. Now we're going to add the diagonal, which looks like this. Now to do this is quite straightforward. So there's two pins uh, up here. Hopefully you can see one of them. There's one here and one the other side. Now what we need to do here is you don't take them off. You basically just loosen them. So just screw these anti-clockwise uh, until when you look at it, it looks quite loose because this is gonna allow us to, so this time, yep, yeah, anti-clockwise. Doesn't matter if you can't see exactly. Imagine there's two little pins here and I'm just an screwing these anti-clockwise so it loosens this up. And then basically what we need to do at this stage is we just need to place the diagonal in. And the way to do that is um, you need to, well, firstly, remove this plastic cap. So consider there's a lot of caps on this. So we've got two caps here. So remove those. Again, keep them for safekeeping. They're all re the good thing is all the, the caps are re really the kind of the same kind of size. So it doesn't matter about kind of keeping them apart too much. Now, when you insert this, you want to insert, insert it uh, kind of this way around, okay? And it should slot in just like that. And you'll see it's loose. And that's exactly what the pins are for. So the pins... Oh, you might have missed that, sorry. So you put the diagonal in this way around and look, it's loose. So this is what the pins are for. They're ensuring that that is secure and in place. So I'm just screwing those two pins clockwise, or in other words, the opposite way to that I unscrewed them. And you should, you will likely find that on the second pin, you'll be greeted with a bit more resistance, but you'll also see that this is, there you go, sorry you should see there's more resistance, will fit, you will feel more resistance, but this is much more in place now. And if I tilt the telescope down, you'll see that that's now in a good position to start looking. You'll be pleased to hear we're very nearly finished. All we need to do is use one of these eyepieces to provide us with the magnification we want. So this is how you'd go about changing these as well. So I'm just picking one at random. And all you need to do here is you need to place this into that diagonal that we were messing around with earlier. And there's another pin up here. Again, I don't know if you can see. Where am I? A bit lost here. Hopefully you can see that there. There's that pin and we're just, again, unscrewing that so the IP slots in. Hopefully you can see that slot in and then we're screwing that up, okay? That's all we're doing. And you want to do that for each and every eyepiece that you use, okay? Now, before you can begin observing, all you need to do is take the final cap off, and this will be on the front of the power seeker. Again, make sure you take that off and make sure that you keep this in a safe place. You'll be pleased to hear we're very nearly finished. All we need to do is use one of these eyepieces to provide us with the magnification we want. So this is how you'd go about changing these as well. So I'm just picking one at random. And all you need to do here is you need to place this into that diagonal that we were 
messing around with earlier. So this is an additional step if you wanted to increase your magnification. You would use the three times Barlow lens included. Again, remember it's got another cap on it, so you take that off. And then essentially what you'd need to do if you wanted to install this is you'd want to remove the eyepiece. So you'd need to un, you know, un, unscrew this and take that eyepiece out. You would then put your Barlow lens in place. Again, screw that on. Remember these little screws, they're just, all, the, all they're about is ensuring that your pieces uh, are kind of fixed and giving you the ability to, to swap things in and out. So that's the first thing you'd need to do to, with the, the Barlow lens. Again, you take off this other cap at the top. Oh, again, we've got a little, little screw. That's the cap there. And then, so I've unscrewed that one. Two, two, two more things to, to uh, look after here. We've got the, um, the eyepiece and then the other the cap for the Barlow lens and then you'd basically add your another eyepiece into into this Barlow lens so you put that in so again if we're using this example I'd put that one in and then we'd screw this on again and that's in place and that's just given us obviously additional magnification using that Barlow lens so that's how to put the Barlow lens in it's an additional step you don't have to do it but I'm sure you're going to want to do it at some point now before we finish the final thing I would like to recommend is the accessory tray don't forget that we'd set that up very, very, you know earlier this is where you can put your eyepieces so look that's in the outer case so it's not going to fit in at this stage if I took this out this would fit in is slot in and you can keep all of your eyepieces in place so I hope this video is useful that's how to set up the Celestron Power Seeker 50AZ. I can't wait to get started using it. If this video is useful, please do hit the like button and do consider subscribing to the channel. If you want to see a review of this particular telescope and model uh, and my experiences of using it, then also make sure you subscribe because I will be releasing a video in due course all about it. So with that said, I hope you have an excellent day. I wish you all the best with this Power Seeker if this is the telescope you opt for. Uh, maybe it's for yourself or for your kid. And, or if not, I hope I wish you all the best with your kind of astronomy journey and viewing the skies.